time to you that so far almost 12 million dollars has been paid to the contractor at today's exchange rate of about 16 cd that translates to about 192 million ghana cities <laughs> and as you can see nothing and i mean nothing is being done here this is the taxpayers money wasted we visited the site for the constructor and you can attest the contractor has parked and left site not only has he abandoned the project the chippings that he brought there the few blocks that were molded to even construct the site our information is that those blocks have been sold the chippings has equally been sold and so the taxpayers money has gone down the drain my checks in Accra indicates that the contractor has even left Ghana we find this development very very unfortunate you're welcome back. This is Newsfile, it's almost authoritative news analysis platform. And here on Newsfile, we put Ghana first. It's brought to you by the kind sponsorship of Bank of Africa, as strong as a group and close as a partner, MTN, everywhere you go. Ashesi University, educating ethical and entrepreneurial leaders for Africa. Robert and Sons Optical Services, that's your comprehensive eye care service provider for 33 plus years. <clears throat> My Way Insurance, dial star 165. Hash on MTN to join my way today. Syntex tanks, it's strong, it's tough, and flamingo paints, <clears throat> it's simply superior. Now let's go through some of your messages. And Prince Henry Koforidia says the NPP should just provide the original voice between Japa and Godfrey Damio. We know that whatever the NDC played to us was doctored simple. Um, as for President Kufuado sacking Godfrey Dame, it's a big no. And for Godfrey Dame to resign himself, it's also a big no. The only way to find a solution and seek accountability from the NPP government is by doing a communal labor in voting out the NPP government led by Dr. Bamiya. And, and okay, you will find a way to slot in your campaign. Um, okay. Kumi says that, uh, Frank Davis says the evidence giving was that of a witness and cannot be objected to. Now the self same person makes a U10 quite bewildering, especially, uh, okay, especially do when you appear to be running away from your own contradictory submissions. Okay, that's a suggestion that is coming for. Um, this one says, for the record, 26th of March, 2024, Mr. Sorry appeared for Jakpa in court. The conversation on the phone happened on the 9th of April, 2024. I think there's no dispute about that. You know, we started the, the, the discussion in a certain way to establish certain facts to help you properly. And the fact that he was represented I think it's not in question anymore. But even if it was not represented, there's a certain communication. We have also educated you. It's not even permitted in the first place. Um, this one uh, says, hmm, this is Mark in the US. It says, when an attorney general engages an accused person on the phone, it is commonly referred to as a proffer, quote unquote proffer or proffer call, quote-unquote. A proffer is an informal communication between a prosecutor in the case, the attorney general and a defendant, or the representative, typically to discuss the possibility of a plea agreement or cooperation. Whether it is proper for an attorney general to engage an accused person on the phone depends on various factors. Uh, and you mentioned jurisdiction. So we have told you what our law says. Our law does not allow this. Let's educate the yeah. public and educate them rightly. Yeah, Senior, I wanted to make the point that Mr. Kweku Pencil is an appointee of President Ekufuado, currently serving as a you have said chair that. for the University of Business and Integrated Development Studies. Not what's, just that. What's the point? He is also a leading MPP member, and in 2008, 
filed to contest the Mfansimai seat. Uh, uh, check the story. The legal battle. Uh, thank you. And, and you know, in this suit against Asabi, we are not we went going to court to, with, a, with, with a recording tape. We are not, we are not going to relate again. He went to court. We are not going to relate again. Sorry, 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 sorry. Saying that Sami, are Sami, Sami, I beg you. Sami, court. Sami. The legal battle for the Mfansimai West Palace. Sami, 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 Sami. You know, thank you. So Musa Abatua. You can see. Modern Musa guy. Abatua in, in Asawasi in says, the recent developments in the ambulance case where Attorney General Dame is allegedly caught on tape trying to uh, coerce star witness Richard Japa <laughs> into giving star witness, <laughs> he's an accused, into giving false testimony to implicate at forcing are deeply troubling and undermine the integrity of our legal system. Such action, uh, if proven true, represent a serious breach of justice and an abuse of power we must advocate for a legal system that operates free from coercion corruption and undue influence um, you say kindly ask uh, mr frank davis what crime did mr ofusuan pofu commit that he is being prosecuted in court uh, for five years now okay you remember that meeting and you remember the content if you're forgotten just google it this one, okay, you don't identify yourself, IQ. You say, uh, please, it is important that uh, you bring Sami Jemfi to book. His lack of candor, decency, and, um, okay, you are insulting, so I can't read the rest of them because you are accusing and you are doing the same thing. Uh, Ken says, by the case, by the case authorizes the extension of without prejudice discussion can be tendered in court. Um, it is the merit substance that is not permissible. Brobe spoke on that. I am watching the program so I can furnish you with the law right now, yeah. but will do so you know, subsequently. You know, the existence of without prejudice com communication can be tendered in court by submission. If a medical report is not evidence, then can the person who tenders it in court be cross-examined on it? It is evidence to prove you are not well. Ah, but. Okay. Um, then uh, Phil says, providing medical excuse letter to court is evidence of proof of sickness when the person was not sick. So it is not evidence in proof of a case or defense in the criminal trial, but evidence to show that Indeed, the person tendering it to the court is indeed sick. Um, Ernest says, all I ask in this is if the attorney general knew all that he was doing is right. Why was he worried he was being recorded? Mm -hmm. Truth always stands. Uh, in the interest of posterity, we must seek to exercise good judgment. Is Frank Davis saying, if this was on the opposite side, he will prof proffer the same arguments. Let's put Ghana first. It's only the way to build our country. It's the only way to build our country. Uh, Bright, just a couple more and then we'll go to the next issue. Um, okay, Bright. Um, okay, you say you want the show to be repeated. The show is always repeated at 9 p.m. Um, Kwame says, in television, editing is standard practice. It is when rashes or unedited material is cleaned up, either for clarity, expunge, re expand reputi repetition, or abridge long, meaningless pauses. The objective is not to alter meaning. To doctor, in my opinion, occurs when original sequence is rearranged or foreign material is introduced. So editing is not necessarily doctrine. Above the act, I think doctrine presupposes ill intent. Um, uh, Matt Boat Baton, if a minister is engaged with a scandal that seemingly affects the image of his government, it doesn't necessarily have to be true to compel such an official to resign. Okay, so you join Kukua Sasari and um, Professor um, APJ Tuya. Junior Masawudu. In fact, Godfrey Dame 
uh, something, what any good prosecutor will do is to have accepted the plea bargain of about 90% before looking at anything else. Uh, Harry Olu, Olu Fawa says, Dame should have resigned the moment the audio recording came out. He has compromised his office, his profession, and his person. He is an embarrassment to the administration. Um, Kojo Dodd says, audio tape and WhatsApp messages with Mr. Japa have made uh, Mr. Dame utterly unfit for the office. He should resign uh, or the president should do the needful. Uh, Eja Amache says, we are gradually becoming a dangerous society. People misbehave and we do everything we can to shield them because it is our party person. Finally, uh, D for T, if, we, if I were Dame, uh, Dame's family, his colleague, his genuine friend, uh, and I had listened to the tape, I'll advise him to lay down his pen and prepare adequately to prove his innocence. Well, that is why I advocate that let's stop the political football and get it into a forum where the proper thing will be done. I think um, yeah, uh, I will take, I'll take a quick break and return uh, to Professor Minla and the rest of them to get us for us to understand why uh, Sami stop misbehaving. We'll be right back. You're welcome back. This is Newsfile, Lisa Mons authoritative news analysis platform. And here on Newsfile, we put Ghana first. And we have very limited time, 30 minutes, to canvas this uh, Paul Godam uh, matter for you. Uh, according to those responsible, the explanation they have brought forward over the matters in respect of the s expenditure of about 12 million US dollars with no work to show for. Their explanation is that uh, it was used for drawings, um, some surveys, and other things, including cutting a, a path to the place and, you know, uh, pitching a camp for the workers that would need to use the place. Now, the question is, should that not earn the country more than it has? Professor David Miller is former uh, pro-vice chancellor uh, for the UDS and president of the Miller Open University in Bogatanga. Uh, okay, that one too. Today, I'm falling for all of the wrong things. <clears throat> it's uh, Bogatanga, and we say Bogatanga, but you can't run away from it. Um, Dr. Charles Nyaba, former executive director, Peasant Farmers Association, Sami Jemfi is still here with us. Um, this is what we're going to do. Uh, because Prof will speak on substantive matters regarding the viability of the Paul Good Dam, we will hold him for a while and deal with the question of the amount spent. You don't take the explanations that have come so far briefly from you before I go to Charles. Not at all, because the explanations are not tenable. Not tenable because, okay, but first of all, um, it is not in doubt that payment to the tune of almost $12 million has been made. 11.9. Yeah, mm. to the company. That's a huge amount of money, okay? Now, it is also not in doubt that when the governor of the Bank of Ghana, the body that made that payment, appeared before the Public Accounts Committee and he was asked the basis for the payment, he could not substantiate it. He referred the question to his auditors. The auditors also could not substantiate the payment. It's been more than a month since that happened in Parliament. Uh, it is only now that we are seeing a statement from Gida attempting to explain the basis of the payment. And they justify the payment by saying that the amount was used for certain studies, topography study, environmental impact assessment, soil test, and the rest and that the amount of money was part of mobilization. The contractor has used it for certain access rules and his campsite and all that. Now, our position on this is clear. This explanation, belated explanation from Gida, is completely contrived. Because the feasibility, if you check VRE's own website, they say that the feasibility 
for the Pualugu Multipurpose Irrigation Dam was done by VRA between 2013 and 2018. 2013 and 2018. And all the things GIDA claims this payment we are talking about was used for were done as part of the feasibility between 2013 and 2018. Mm. And the Minister for Agri, They say the things that were done are these. Yeah. Environmental and social impact assessments. Yeah. <clears throat> December 2020. Mm -hmm. Topographic survey and mapping. Mm -hmm. November 2021. Mm -hmm. Geology and ge geotechnical studies and drawings. Mm -hmm. November 2021. Mm -hmm. Soil and land suitability assessments. Mm -hmm. uh, November 2021. Mm -hmm. Design report and drawings in parts one to three, mm -hmm. November 2021. Mm -hmm. Resettlement action plan, March 2022. And cadastral survey, July 2022. These are the things that have been done. <laughs> so, and some of them, our point is simple. These don't form part of the mobilization of a contractor. Environmental impact assessment was done together. Construction of access road. I'll come there. Contractors I'll come to the construction site plan. and offices. Yeah, and site. Construction but of temporary and auxiliary exactly. facilities. So I'll come to the construction part. I want to talk about the investigative reports they claim the contractor has done. You can talk to any expert in the field. Those don't form parts of mobilization. And the Minister for Agric himself is reported by the media, specifically modern Ghana, okay, to have said that Pualugu multipurpose dam feasibility studies cost 60 to 70 million dollars. Construction cost 1 billion dollars. Listen to the headline. Pualugu multipurpose dam feasibility studies cost 60 to 70 million dollars. Construction cost 1 billion dollars. If you read the story, the minister explains that they've done environmental impact assessment, feasibility, all the tests you mentioned. And the cost is 60 to 70 billion million dollars. That is we what led the contractor uh, did raise a bank guarantee of 60 million dollars. No, we have not even got into mm. the, that, that place. We are talking, they say, you have, the, the Auditor General says the Bank of Ghana has paid almost 12 million dollars to the contractor. And we, and together with the journalists, multimedia, we are saying we've been to the site, there is no evidence of actual work done. Now, Gida comes in to explain the work that the 12 million dollars has been used for. And they are talking about environmental impact assessment and other preliminary works that borders on feasibility. So we are saying in response to that, that those works, those feasibility works, there is a cost to that, according to the Minister for Agric, 60 to 70 million dollars, separate from the contract giving the contractor, which is about a billion dollars. Oh, that's your understanding. That is, that is what the fact says. Mm. You understand? So the feasibility, all these investigations preceded the payment of the mobilization to the contractor preceded. All those things had to be done before the cost of the contract could even be put together. Because if you have not done the soil test, how will you know the kind of dam to build and the cost of that dam? So they had done everything, and according to the Minister of Greek, the cost was 60 to 70 million dollars. Government has paid. They now award a, a contract to a contractor and they have paid him $12 million for no work done. So they can't say that the preliminary works that the state has already paid for is what they use the $12 million for. Now to the construction uh, leg of their claim. Samson, I'm happy with the kind of attention multimedia has given this story. And I want to throw another challenge because I have already done my background work. And I can tell you that there is no access road from Sariba to Pasenchi, forgive me if I get that name uh, wrong, mm -hmm. that connects Sariba to the uh, campsite or the project site. No access road. If you are talking about the removal of shrubs or a bulldozer moving through a bushy area and that create, you know the topography of the north, mm -hmm. and that creates a kind of path, fine. But they can't talk about 5.2 kilometer access road. It doesn't exist. Mm. They can't talk about 4.2 kilometer access road. It doesn't exist. And I will be very happy if you can send your reporter there again. It is not there. If it comes to the campsite the contractor has created, you've mm. seen it. What? Container and all that. Does, does that warrant the expenditure of a colossal $12 million? No. So, Samson, this matter is clearly indefensible. Okay. The media 
We commend you for following it up. We commend our members of parliament. We are all going to follow this matter up and pursue it to its logical conclusion, which is that the payments that have been made for no work done must be retrieved for the state for developmental purposes. Because is that not too we early don't have to money say? To because waste. there's a project, the cost of the project is uh, 993 yeah. million, million US dollars. Yes. So why the, don't we wait till we get no, to the... Because, because the project was supposed to last for four years. The duration was four years. The, we have gone past the four years. But they have explained that there have been difficulties financially. It, there is and no way. that is why no, we were... In all honesty, tell me. The money if, the government if, if for four and a half years, access. If for four and a half years, government has not been able to raise the money. Is it the six months they have left that they'll be able to raise almost a billion dollars? This broke government. That can't even pay contractors. Can they raise it? Okay, let me go oh, to let's Charles. Let's retrieve the money thank for you. us. Because thank you the very much, Sami. Thank you very much. much. The corruption is too much. Thank you, and thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you. Now, uh, Charles, uh, what, what, what should we be looking at? What, what's the problem? Uh, the explanation by the Ghana Irrigation Development Authority, GIDA, is it GIDA or GIDA? Sounds like GIDA, yeah? GIDA. <laughs> Gida brought us trouble. Let's hope that Gida doesn't bring us trouble. What, what should we be looking at? Why, why do you doubt the explanation, if you do? Hello, Charles. Hi, Charles Nyaba. Please unmute your mic. Okay. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. I'm saying that if you permit me, let me just give a, a brief uh, history why Pizan Farmers are so much interested in this project, because it's our brain project. During the prior to the 2016 elections, we had what we call the Farmers Manifesto, where we looked at the priority is that we think that any of the parties that will consider them in their manifestos who consider and vote that party in power. So we did engage MPP, and at the time we made a series of proposals concerning the need to develop our irrigation infrastructure. And one of the proposals we made was the One Blade One Dam concept, which was accepted. Polgo Dam was one of the areas that we, we, we discussed with them. Uh, Temde Dam in the uh, Tempani was one of the other dams that raised those concerns. We said that because if you look at the areas where our people are, we have over 90% of them being farmers. Now, for the past one decade, we realized that the rainy pattern changed, the world changed. So around December, November, you see the youth, the young women, trooping to the southern sector to look for jobs because the grain-fed agriculture was no more attractive to them. So when they accepted our proposal, we all went to the rural areas, said, OK, if that's the case, we need to give them opportunity to grow. Would they hope that when they come, they will implement that? So if you look at the voting pattern in 2016, you realize that when you go to Upper East, North East, Upper West, Northern Region, Bono Oti Region, MPP votes increased drastically because we were hoping that these proposals would be accepted. After the 2016 elections, we keep monitoring these projects. Maybe you would have remembered our uh, advocacy on the One Village One Dam. Along the line, the way the One Dam One Village was implemented, we're not happy. So we did engage, and then we were promised that at least there will be some kind of uh, reforms to ensure that they are properly implemented. Again, in 2019, uh, the sword was cut for the Polgo Dam. We were also monitoring. In, 20, uh, in, in 2022, October 27, all our members in Upper East and of East region, together with the chief, we went to the site and realized that our expectations were not met. So we did a match in the Nalirgu. We had an engagement with the Nairi. After that, Bomia called us to the Flat Star House, where we had engagement, and he gave us another promise that for now um, there's lack of funding, but he's going to do everything within his power to ensure that funding is allocated for the construction of the dam. Around that time, we never knew that uh, 11.9 million was already paid to the contractor because 
That's at the time we visited the site. There was no work uh, done there. Now, uh, the following year, that's 2023, in the agriculture budget, 250 million Ghana cities was allocated for the construction of the lab. We were further disappointed when it came to the mid-year budget, that money was taken out. So when the public account committee brought out this information, for the past two weeks, we never had rest in the office. We got calls from the members around the area, you know, for farmers. They think that this money is so much that they will pay that for only mobilization without seeing anywhere down. And I'm also thinking so because if you look at the one village one dam, the each dam was uh, was uh, was costing 250,000 Ghana cities. At least we saw some kind of excavation, some kind of small work done, except that the dam didn't meet standard for agriculture purposes. But in this case, we are not even seeing anything. So for us as an association, uh, we are not too much concerned about the politics part of the discussion. But we want to see that if 11.9 billion is paid, we want to see some kind of certain that at least our farmers can use for something. Mm. But as it stands now, we think there's no goal for the 11.9 million. And we are looking to here in going forward, what measures are going to be put in place to ensure that we have the problem at purpose down. Is it is it is it true that the contractor has abandoned sites? Yeah. You know, last week we visited there, there's no there's no sign of any contractor there. There were some few chippings. The time we visited in 2022, and then some blocks at the site. But later on, all those chippings were gone. There was nothing there. To be mm. very honest with you. Yes. You're, okay, we, we, his line dropped. But his point has been made. Let's go to uh, Professor Miller now. Um, because he, he has a certain background he wants to bring for us to appreciate whether or not um, this is a project that we should continue despite the issues that have been raised. And as you can see, uh, is that the road they talk about? The road that has been constructed and the money has been spent? Oh, that's it. So that's why the members of parliament who visited the place said a path rather than a road. This all there is. Those of you who have the benefit of the television, uh, this, this, is, this, is, this is not good. <laughs> Look, it's a very serious matter, but you can't help it. Yes. Yeah. Charles, do we have you back? Yes, that's on. Okay, Charles, describe what you are seeing on the screen to our viewers. Where is yeah, this? So now, now, now I have no access to the screen, but what I was seeing is that we visited a site, and then that's it. Apart from the initial parents, the trees and the stuff, they paved the site. There's not a site. The, the camps that are constructed in it is a different uh, community, far away from but the depth of the dam, it was it was that way. And then, some to run right other way, to the dam. But there was no that. There was no that. Oh, your line, your line is not the best. Yeah, your line is not the best. Your line is not the best. Your line is not the best. Let's hear uh, John Jinapo when they visited the place. Let's hear uh, what he has to say. Uh, once again, to put matters in perspective for you as we try to get a, a clean line to Charles Nyaba or Professor Minla if we can get them. So let's hear John Jinapo. I can confirm to you that so far almost $12 million has been paid to the contractor. At today's exchange rate of about 16 CD, that translates to about $192 million. Ghana cities. And as you can see, nothing, and I mean nothing, is being done here. This is the taxpayers' money wasted. We visited the site for the constructor, and you can attest the contractor has parked and left site. Not only has he abandoned the project, the chippings that he brought there. The few blocks that were molded 
to even construct the site our information is that those blocks have been sold the chippings has equally been sold and so the taxpayers money has gone down the drain my checks in Accra indicates that the contractor has even left Ghana we find this development very very unfortunate right uh, okay Charles are you back clearly on it yes please okay I, I was asking if you were you were able to see the the footage that we were showing yeah, so to be honest with you, even though I haven't seen them, uh, but I also have a first hand information about the situation now. Mm. When we visited the site, when? Uh, those things that were described by Gita. When? 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 When did you visit? That was in the, uh, December 2023. Okay. Yeah, those things that were described by Gita. As being contacted, we haven't seen them. They they come. Not not at all. Went. Not not at all. They, Hello. You said you hadn't seen them. I'm asking, not at all. Not at all. Oh they come, come on. Sami Jamfi said Sami Jamfi speaks about what he saw, but it shouldn't be worth the expenditure. No, it doesn't work. What we saw there, what we saw there, as a layman, I don't think it will cost more than a million than uh, a million dollars. Mm -hmm. Because there was virtually nothing. Apart from the clearing of the trees, where farmers were now using the damp floor to plant cuckoo, uh, to plant rice and other vegetables, there was no any contact uh, that we had to plant. The asked that they uh, were just uh, that they used to play it to play it. So, for love, at the site. Okay? They come for a camp. I, I get, but I ordered them, and and I never. Charles's line, Charles's line is still very bad, um, very unfortunate. But the the pictures you are seeing, uh, for those of you who don't have the benefit of the television, it's complete bare land, complete bare land, and then you see some. Uh, gravel, you know, or chippings that have been, how many trips will that be? <laughs> Sitting uh, two different extremes of the place, and then you see some blocks that have been molded around there. They are just, uh, actually, uh, the weeds are growing over them, and it's a bare land, and unless the media <laughs> went to the wrong place, and the members of parliament who went to the for the inspection went to the wrong place. This is the road that the authority, the Ghana Irrigation Authority, Development Authority, is referring to that it says has been constructed. And all of that, you know, is supposed to be what is costing us. Sword was cut for this project on the 29th of November 2019, and it was supposed to be completed within four years and six months. Uh, the first component of it involves a 60 megawatt hydropower and 50 uh, megawatt solar power. And then the second component is the irrigation infrastructure. Uh, the cost together is 993 million. The first component is 5 million plus, and then the second component is 4 million plus. The project was awarded as two independent engineering and procurement construction contracts to Mercedes Power Construction Corporation of China. That is Power China. Um, it consisted of a detailed feasibility study and engineering construction, all pre-construction activities uh, that were required for actual construction. This is what they are telling us the monies have been spent on. It's a very difficult uh, place. Um, the expected mobilization payment from government was the amount of 48.57 million 
and then after receiving advance payment guarantee, government paid the 11.94 million, which is 25% of the total mobilization that is required. And yet there is nothing on the ground. But this is the justification we are getting, that they commenced mobilization to the site in April of 2021, uh, then engineering designs, major output of the project design has been submitted. You know, okay, so I suppose that under the circumstances, we will just have to follow. They say it's, it's a 5.2 kilometer access road that has been constructed. And then there is also the contractor's camp, four kilometers on site uh, and around the camp. Uh, have been completed, 11, 11 blocks of building, 100 rooms uh, as site offices. Construction area and main structures are completed, except for water and electricity. Please, what am I reading? I'm reading from a statement that they have issued. And look, clearly the, the, the media and the, and the MPs, they went to the wrong place. Yes. From what we are reading, they went to the wrong place. They couldn't have gone to the site where they were showing a bare land and blocks and some chippings that were sitting there. You know, initial financing uh, of $2 billion with Hydro, Sino Hydro Corporation Limited in September 2022 has stalled, and government has been forced to fall on the regular budget to finance. Government is seeking alternative funding sources. Contractor has agreed to halt works on the project. Okay. Uh, now, now one can appreciate why people, people are comparing this to the, to the National Cathedral project. But this is a very important project. It's a project that's supposed to hold water when it is spilled from the Bagri Dam and it causes death rather than you know, holding the water for irrigation purposes and for power. And this is what we, where we are with it. Professor David Miller, thank you for making time to join us. Thank you, sir. We, we, have, we have just about uh, three minutes uh, to draw the curtains on this. Um, just help us within the next two, three minutes. What do you have to say about the development? How do you feel about it? Being someone who has been very passionate and excited about the prospects of this project? Yeah, uh, well, it's a pity that uh, there is nothing to refer to as a project. Because the, the objectives of the project, like you summarized, includes um, building a dam. In fact, building two dams. There's a dam and there's a weir. A weir is a lower dam, a smaller dam. That will boost the water for use for irrigation. Mm. So that facility was to be provided, and the facility would provide solar and hydro energy. Then it will go into irrigation. It will do a 30,000 population water supply to Walwale. Then it will be used for fishing purposes and the township belt and a lot of road networks. So it's a multi-purpose project. But unfortunately, the takeoff has been further with a lot of problems. So there, there, there is, for me, there is nothing that I can call as a project success story. Mm. Yeah. V very unfortunate. Uh, thank you very much for your time, Prof. We will have to find a special time and sit down with you because of your your knowledge and your passion about this project and what the prospects are for uh, the northern parts of the country. This is not only for the upper region or the upper east and the other uh, northeast and so. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you indeed. Now, let uh, me let you know that this show, my outfit, as always, is by Konati Clothing. And Konati Clothing is doing something special, as I announced to you last week. If you make your orders between now 
and uh, Father's Day, and between now and the Muslim celebration that is coming up, you get between 10 to 15 percent discounts. Konanti Clothing is at Adenta Shopping Center, Adenta Down. You can call them 0244 676732. And join me tomorrow afternoon on my favorite show, The Law. Um, last week, I hope you enjoyed the Chief Justice who was on the show. Uh, tomorrow at 2 p.m., I'm engaging Professor Stephen Kweku Asari. You know him as Kweku Azar. After the Supreme Court's decision that has lifted some of the barriers on dual citizens and their capacity to hold certain offices in Ghana, we ask the question, what is next? We'll delve into the decision of the Supreme Court and ask what must happen next. I'm Samson Ladia Yanini. Have a good afternoon.